Hey guys, what's up? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got a little segment on mixing a song with FabFilter's new Pro-Q3 EQ. This is a super powerful EQ, especially for subtractive EQing for removing things. I think it's great for beginners because it'll show you how to EQ and help you kind of develop your ears, and then it's also great for more advanced mixers because it's just chock full of features. Um, You'll notice I'm using Logic um, instead of Reason. I have been definitely moving more and more towards Logic lately because Reason just hasn't been keeping up with my workflow. Um, but anyway, I still use Reason a ton and I'm gonna still keep making videos on Reason, but today I just had this little sketch and I decided it would be a good opportunity to show you how to mix and some of the cool new features in FabFilter's Pro-Q3. So let's take a quick listen. This is, you know, just a, an idea of some sort of like 80s synth wave thing. Um. Nothing crazy, but you'll see I've loaded the fab filter on every channel at some place. So let's start now with the, just uh, we'll open up the bass. Um, and the fab filter on this. Here. So this is what it looks like. Let me just totally reset this. Um, so this is sort of similar to the, you know, you've got the frequency here, you've got a bar here, this is the EQ, and you can click anywhere, and it creates a notch or a, a band. Um, you can do bell, you can use any of the different shapes you'd like, from notch to band to shelves to tilts, Frequency, gain, Q, and then you've also got the ability to do mid, side, left, right, all of that fun stuff. But we'll stick with stereo. We'll keep this kind of simple. Um, I've created a second band that I don't need at the moment, so I'm going to un undo that. Um, right click it to delete. Um, so the first thing I want to show you is because I've added a Fab Filter, filter Pro Q3 to every channel, what it allows me to do is pull up the frequency of another channel that's already got the Pro-Q on it and compare their frequency ranges together, which is super helpful for um, this sort of thing. Now the drums are muted, so we're not hearing anything, but once we do this, you'll see the red is the drums and the purple is the bass. And so now you can start to see how the frequencies are interacting. But on top of that, you're gonna see these little vertical red bands, and that shows where there's a frequency buildup, which is super helpful for subtractive EQ, because that means you probably need to take something away from there. Uh, otherwise, it's just too much frequency, too loud. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're also gonna open up the um, oops, we're going to open it up both instances of the EQ on the drums and the bass. Now normally I wouldn't, I don't EQ in solo, but for the purposes of really showing you with your ears, because if you're not listening on good speakers, you might not hear this. Um, I'm just going to keep it in solo. So here I already have the bass selected. You see they're showing the same thing. So what we can do is now take the bass and we can click on the headphones and it just solos out that band of the bass. So even let's let's mute the bass for a second. So I've got this band on the drums. By clicking on the headphones, you just hear what you're working with. So you can decide, hmm, do I like 50 hertz more in the bass or do I like it more in the kick? what is sounding better to me. And to me, I think I want to keep the kick because that's a lot of energy. We'll keep that neutral um, and we'll notch it on the bass. Take a couple dB out and increase the slope here so it's steeper and narrower. Just bring it down a bit. And then you notice there's also a buildup going on around here. So let's 
That's pretty nasally on the bass side. I'll pull it up a little bit more. It's just sort of So that's not a particularly pleasant sound. I don't care what it sounds like on the drums. I don't really want that sound on the bass. I narrow the cue a bit. But let's hear what it sounds like on the drums. I think that's actually a good part of the snare. It's a bit of its crack, so I don't think we want to lo leave, lose any of that. All right, so now we've got, you can go through and do this on all of the channels, and I'll do it on a few more just to show it to you. Um, so we brought, bring in the piano, and let's see how the piano and the bass play together. And we'll switch this to electric piano. This is already set to the bass set. I messing with this earlier. So it's showing this whole area right here. Um, that seems like a pretty fundamental section of the piano to me. But what about this on the bass? Again, not super essential on the bass. So let's do a narrow cut here. And by taking out all these overlapping frequencies, you make more room for all the good stuff to shine through. Um, all right, this air pad now here, I don't think this is gonna really be a conflict with the bass. I think it'll conflict with some other stuff. But let's see. Here. And just based on everything else, I'm going to assume this isn't that important on the bass. You probably would want to check that. Let's also do a, uh, it defaults to a low shelf. I probably want to switch this to a uh, low pass or low cut. Now, you can keep on going and doing this, um, and this is probably what you should do, but I'm going to switch things up in a second. Um, but one thing I want to say is, obviously, you need to learn to use your ears, and it takes a lot of judgment to do this, and there's a bunch of skills, but this is why I think this is really good for beginners, because it helps you train your ears and hear what you're looking for when it comes to overlapping frequencies and overlapping sounds and all of that. Um, also, if you're enjoying this, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions about how I'm doing this or what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, uh, please leave a comment below or if you think this is just a crazy way to mix, go ahead. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this um, synth lead in, but we're going to do something slightly different. So the things I want to actually... It's the relationship between these two that I want to focus on. Um, so we're going to take the piano here and compare it to the pop lead. Great. And we're going to take the pop lead. And compare it to the piano. Um, and so first of all, I think I'm going to low pass both of these, or low cut. Um, sharper, steeper slope. Just don't really need any of that. Okay, so now let's look at this area right here. That just doesn't sound good, so we'll remove that, but let's look at it on this one.
So, there's another way we can do this. And if we go here, we can actually make this dynamic, which is basically like a compressor, a very narrow band compressor. You see how it's actively ducking when it comes on, instead of fully removing the EQ. And then if we want it to remove more, and so the sound can stay sort of more neutral. And let's narrow the cue a little bit. And let's turn that. Um, and let's just try turning that off. And turn it back on. Now my advice would be to not be comparing every instrument against every other instrument. That's an insane number of combinations. Really more the ones that you think they would clash with. So like drums and bass, or like bass and guitar, or guitar and piano, right? You're, you don't need to do this in every single permutation. Um, and I just want to show you one other thing. Um, so remember when we went to this 80s pad here, um, and we didn't do anything to it, even though it was... Let's see, well, we only compared it to the bass, so let's compare it to, to the um, pop loop here. Actually, we just, we'll just do it on this one. There's a lot of overlap here. But what we can do is remove it, but only for the mids, because we, because uh, the stereo information of the pop lead, or of the air pad, sorry, the stereo lead information of the air pad is much more important. It's really out wide, so by switching from mid side, um, we allow it to stay. We cut it out in the middle, but keep that. The frequency is still there on the sides, and that way um, it can still sort of shine uh, without taking up too much space um, in the full mix. And we could even do the inverse here on the synth pop lead if we wanted to. Um, I probably wouldn't because it would be a, a little extreme, but um, so this is what? 2K? So we could give it a cut but only on the sides. And so now the synth pop lead is narrower on the sides, but present in the middle. And the air pad is missing in the middle, but present on the sides. So all you've seen me do here is subtractive EQ. And the Fab Filter is also really good for additive EQ, whether you're doing dynamic increases or just surgical increases. But I don't know that it's any significantly better than any other plugin when it comes to figuring out where you want to add EQ. But when it comes to figuring out where you want to cut EQ from, this is almost certainly the best plugin around, um, not only for beginners, but also for intermediate and advanced people, because you just get so much information so quickly. Uh, you also have the ability to A, B between a couple different settings. Um, you know, there's different phase relationships you can do. You can also map it to keys so that you can turn MIDI or you can turn frequencies on or off as the song goes along. Like if you want a different cut, in the verse versus the chorus. Um, there's all sorts of great stuff in here, and uh, I keep on learning it. Uh, I would say probably, I bought a lot of EQs. This is probably one of the more essential ones. Uh, probably the only one, I think, that really makes the job of EQing easier, uh, which is a big, big thing to say for it. Um, I'll note that this was a review copy, um, so, I mean, that doesn't really influence my take on it. I think it's super powerful and super helpful. Um, and also, I think that it's probably 
um, one of those EQs that you could grow with uh, throughout your whole career as a mixer. Uh, so hope you liked this review. I think you can get a free 30-day demo of it uh, at fabfilter.com. I'll put a link down there. So check it out. See if you like it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe.